Welcome to Out of Zion with Susan Michael, an exploration of the Bible and the land of Israel. From ancient biblical sites to the story behind the stories, join Susan on a journey through the most exciting book on the planet. Hit the subscribe button for future episodes, which will deepen your faith and bring the Bible to life. And now here's our host, Susan Michael. Well, hey there, and welcome to Out of Zion. I'm Susan Michael, your host, and we are going to begin today our series called The 3D Bible. I'm the director of the United States branch of the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. And over the years, I have had the privilege of traveling to Israel many times. But my first trip was when I was just 19 years old. I was a university student, a, a Bible studies major, and I had heard about people studying abroad during the summer. So I went to one of my professors and, and I asked if he knew of any study programs in Israel since I was a Bible major. And he said, absolutely, and go if at all possible, because it will change your life. He knew what he was talking about. And I can attest to you that if you will come with me on this journey and let your Bible come alive, it will also change your life. And yes, maybe one day you can travel with me to Israel and you can experience that for yourself. But in the meantime, I invite you, join me here each week and let's take this journey together. This is not a Bible study. It's a study about the Bible. And this study is going to make every sermon and every Bible study you've ever participated in make so much more sense. Now, before starting this series, I looked around to see what was already available for you to teach how to read the Bible. And I ordered a number of books and I looked at YouTube videos. And what I found is that most of them started at about a third grade level, maybe a fifth grade level, but none of them actually taught you how to read. They didn't teach the ABCs that you get in the first grade. So what I want to do is I want to teach you the ABCs. And then as you progress through your education of the Word of God throughout your life, you're going to understand what it is that you're reading and uh, you're going to have that wonderful experience of your Bible coming alive. So in this series, we're going to talk about how to read the Bible, the land and people of the Bible. Should we read the Old Testament? proof that the Bible is true, and what does this all mean for you? But before we start, let's talk about you. I imagine that I have both believers and non-believers that are listening today, and maybe even some pastors and some church leaders. For those of you who may not be a believer, you may have some doubts, you may have lots of questions, I want you to know you should feel free to ask any questions there are no wrong questions. A wrong question is a question that's not sincere. So if you really want to know the truth, then this is the right place for you. And for you that are believers, and you may go to church regularly, but yet you didn't grow up in Sunday school. And in fact, today you're growing up in a society that is post-Christian and moving quickly to being anti-Christian. A lot of accusations are thrown at Christianity, they're especially at evangelical Christianity and at the Bible. So you've just got questions. I'm so glad that you're here. This is a safe place for you. Together, let's find the answers to your questions. And to the pastors and the leaders that may be listening, well, I'm humbled that you're here, but let's learn together how to make the Bible come alive for our congregants and our members. Let's learn how to teach the ABCs and build a firm foundation for future generations. And to all of you, please give me feedback, make comments, send in your questions, and I will try to answer them in future episodes. So let's get started with our first question. Why study the Bible? I mean, you may be thinking, why does it matter? Or you may be saying, I go to church every Sunday, I listen to the sermon, why do I need to study? Great question. So let me be very biblical here and answer your question 
with a few questions of my own. Well, do you want to understand the universe and the purpose of life? Do you want to understand your purpose in life? Do you want to know God better? Do you want to have more power, of His power in your life? Well, then this is the place to be. The point is this, that the Bible contains everything you need to know to live your life. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. A few verses later, the psalmist says, I love your commandments more than gold. Wow, more than gold. That's how valuable this book is and the words of wisdom that are in it. But the Bible is more than just a book that's going to give you knowledge or even spiritual insights. It's a book that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And as you spend time in its pages, you're actually fellowshipping with the Lord and you're making yourself available to Him to work in your heart, to speak to you about your life and to give you direction. You know, when I was 16 years old and I was just, I didn't even know the Lord yet really, but He was beginning to work in my life and I was a bit curious. And so I went to the pastor of our church and I asked if he knew of a Bible that was in a more modern translation that was easier to read and easier to understand. And so he recommended one and I bought it. It was just a New Testament. And a few weeks later, a friend of mine asked if I could fill in for her at work while she went on a two week vacation. And she was working at the local YMCA. She was managing the gym, the gymnasium there. So it was a small town, a small Y and a small gym. And, uh, but her job was to just be there so if someone came in to use the equipment in the gymnasium that she would oversee it, make sure they used it properly and they were safe. Well, I, I filled in for her and there was really not much to do. Very few people used the gym and if they did, it was only for about 10 minutes. So I brought this New Testament to work and over the next two weeks, I read the entire New Testament. And I will tell you, when I put that book down, there was a power at work in my life that just had not been there before. I knew it, I felt it, and I just had an inner resolve. This was the direction that I needed to go in. And within a, week, a month from that, at a church service, I then gave my life to the Lord, and there's no looking back. But I remember very, very vividly that after two weeks of spending time in the Word of God, fellowshipping with Him in that Word, that I was a stronger person. I was a different person. But don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. So take this journey with me, and I promise you, you will never be the same. Now, along those lines, another reason to read your Bible is the whole person concept. Now, you might be saying, what is that? Well, I went to a Christian university, and it was really founded upon this concept of the whole person, and it was found in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Let me read that scripture to you. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved until his coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what I want you to take from this is spirit, soul, and body. We are a tripart being. We're not just a body. We're not just a spirit. We have a spirit. We have a soul, which is your mind and your emotions, and we have a body. And they all need to be tended to, to be a, a whole, healthy person. You know, we understand the concept of taking care of our body. We have to feed our body. We have to take care of it. We have to exercise it and keep it strong in order to stay healthy. So here I was in university, and we were feeding our minds every day. And so the university said, while you're building your mind and you're building your intellect, do not neglect your body and therefore they had a mandatory exercise requirement. Yes, we had to exercise every week and report on it, and it was the best thing. Uh, it was really wonderful. 
But they also said, don't neglect your spirit. So they had chapel services and worship services and Bible studies. And after four years of hearing this concept over and over, spirit, soul, and body, it built such a great firm foundation in my life of that understanding, don't neglect your spirit while you're building your mind, while you're exercising and, and feeding your body, don't neglect your spirit. So how do you feed your spirit? But by spending time in the Word of God, letting that spirit speak to you, direct you, and then going forth and living your life in the power of the spirit. So last reason to read the Bible. We've talked about the spirit, soul, and body. We've talked about that it's a spiritual book. We've talked about the knowledge that you're going to gain. But honestly, the Bible is such an amazing and unique book. It's all in a league of its own. I call it the most exciting book on the planet. I mean, what other book you know, has 66 different books in it written by 40 different people over a period of like 1,500 years? that it all comes together as one narrative. It all makes sense. It's all inspired by the same Holy Spirit and teaches us about the same God. And the oldest of those writings is now today, it's probably 3,500 years old. And yet it contains prophecies that are being fulfilled in our day. Just think about it. You know, America is 250 years old. So we think 250 years, that's a long, long time. Think about a thousand years. Think about 2,000 years. Think about 3,000 years. 4,000 years ago, things that God spoke to Abraham are coming to fulfillment in our day. You know, when you go with me to Israel, you're going to find one of my favorite places is an old gate way up in the north of the country to the city of Dan, which uh, in the time of Abraham was known as Laish. This gate, it's a red mud brick gate, 4,000 years old to this ancient city. And you stand there and you look at this gate and the steps leading up to it and you think, our father Abraham probably walked right up these stairs and through that gate into that city. Because in the book of Genesis, we find that he went to the region near that city. It's very, very possible he went into it. That's how old that gate is. And I stand there at awe every single time thinking, 4,000 years, how long is that? And here we are today, what was written and what was said then is just as true, just as accurate, and is being fulfilled in our days. The Bible is also exciting because it is so accurate. But we often don't realize this unless we're reading the Bible at what I call the 3D level. Now next week, we're going to talk about how to get to the 3D level. But that's what happened when I first went to Israel on that study trip. I was there studying the Bible in the very land where it had taken place. And I was surrounded by that Hebraic Eastern Jewish culture. I was surrounded by Jewish people, the descendants of the very ones that were written about in this book. The book stood up. It took on flesh and bones. It was about real people and real places. It's not made up stories. It's not mythology just to give you some moral to the story. It is absolutely true and it is absolutely accurate. And you realize that when you're reading it at the 3D level. We're going to talk more next week about how to get to that 3D level. But you might be asking yourself, Okay, but how can we really know that it's true? You're saying it's true, but how do we know these documents weren't changed over the years? I mean, you said it yourself, 4,000 years, that's a long time. How do we know that these stories really took place? Well, there's two answers I can give you. One is the Jewish commitment to keeping the law to the 
absolute extreme detail. So the ancient Jewish scribes, and even still to this day, but the, the ancient scribes, when they were writing out a new manuscript, a new scroll, if they made one mistake, it had to be thrown away and they started all over. That's how committed they were to complete accuracy. But there's another reason I can give you uh, that we can be really very assured about the accuracy of our manuscripts. And that is because of the absolutely ground-shaking find in 1947 of what's called the Dead Sea Scrolls. They had been kept in safety of a very dry desert region for 2,000 years, and a shepherd boy found them. And today we are able to, they've done testing, carbon testing on these scrolls, and they know that some of them date back 2,200 years. They're from 200 years before the time of Christ, some of them, and yet they match the words that we have in our Bible. They match the manuscripts that our translators have been working from. So what a boost it was to knowing the sure authenticity of our Bible. Okay, I have one final thought for you about the importance of the Word of God. You know, one of the first stories in the Bible we find in Genesis 3. It's a story we all know very well. It's about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and God says to them, you can eat of any tree except this one. You cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what happens? But the evil tempter in the form of the serpent comes to Eve, and he begins to ask this question. Did God really say that? Is that really what God said? Is that really what God meant? And he begins to put doubt into Eve's mind. And she nurtures that doubt. And before you know it, she's also doubting whether God really meant that or said it. He must not have really meant it. She eats from the tree. We know the rest of the story. That was a, a serious decline in mankind after that. But isn't it interesting that today, Many people think that they're so much more enlightened and so much more intellectual than all those people throughout the generations that believed the Bible was the Word of God. And so they're questioning, you really think God said that? Well, I hate to tell you, but you actually haven't progressed any beyond Adam and Eve and the serpent. That question, and that has been around from beginning, and it's intended to trip up mankind and to draw us away from the Word of God because it is so powerful in our lives. You know, I tell you that story because I want you to, if you go to the end of the, of the Bible, of the Christian Bible, the book of Revelation, we find in Revelation 19 that the Word of God is victorious. It, it describes Christ's return on a white horse victorious, and it says that his name is the Word of God. So the Bible begins with this question, is this really what God said? And it ends with proof of the power of the Word of God and that it is true and it's victorious. Wow, now that's a story worth reading. <laughs> you know, the Word is living and breathing, and I want you to imagine for a minute this book just as when we talk about Jesus. We, Jesus was fully human, and he was fully divine at the same time. This Bible is fully human. It was written by men. It was written by human beings. It's written in their words. It was written from their thoughts. It was written with their pen or, or spoken by their mouth. It's fully human. But yet, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and therefore it's infused with the Holy Spirit. It's living, it's alive, and it's powerful. You know, Jesus said in John 6, 13, he said, it's the Spirit that gives life. And he says, these words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Hebrews 11 tells us that the very world was created and formed by the Word of God. God spoke and the world was created that's how powerful His Word is. 
It's a part of Him going forth. So that's why we need to spend time in this book, letting it infuse our lives with His Spirit and with His power. We will never be the same. So I ask you to join me next week. We're going to talk about how to read the Bible. So be sure and subscribe to the Out As I Am podcast or on YouTube so that you can join us again here next week. And until then, may God bless. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Out of Zion with Susan Michael. Be sure to subscribe to Out of Zion now on Apple Podcasts, cpnshows.com, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen and learn. Out of Zion with Susan Michael is a production of ICEJ USA, all rights reserved.